Hello, this is Brett from 2techteachers.com, and today I wanted to kind of give you a rundown on how I teach Photoshop to upper elementary and middle school students. Uh, this is a question I'm often asked. Um, it seems that, you know, Photoshop is a very complex tool, and it is, and um, I, I try to teach it in a way that tries to make it not so complex for my students. So the first thing they do is they open up Photoshop, and right away they get confused because there's no working document. So the way I'd like to actually um, go through this with you is uh, almost as if I'm teaching it to my students. And so that way you can kind of see how I do it and maybe go ahead and modify that a little bit. But first, we do have to start with a new page. And right away on this page, I do some explaining as to what these all mean. And, um, you know, the difference between working with pixels and inches. And one of the most common mistakes you'll find students make is they're in the wrong one. So, for example, for our first document, I always start them off with an 800 by 600 pixel document. Well, a lot of times the students will go through and work in inches. Well, as you can see, you're working with right away an 824 megabyte file. So what ends up happening is their document is going to crash on them. And so if you notice that there maybe they're zoomed in at 1% and everything's running really slow, make sure that they are actually working in pixels and not inches. And then I go ahead and just change the resolution down to 72, just to keep the file size small, and we're not going to be printing these. And so it just kind of works for that. Um, we're going to be working in color mode of RGB color, and we're going to change over. Uh, right now I use Profoto, but um, we're just going to stick with sRGB. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK. All right. So we've got our blank document. The first thing I have the kids do is start off with the brush tool. And with the brush tool, um, I show them, first of all, you can change the brush size up by dropping down the, the brush tick mark here, uh, working with size and hardness. Um, we actually start by writing our names. And I first have them change the hardness all the way down to zero and with a, a fairly decent sized brush. And then we will write our name. And then what I'll do is have them adjust the hardness up to 100 so they can see the difference in how the, the brush acts when you change the hardness on it. Kind of like a spray can versus a more solid paintbrush. The other thing I do show them how to do is how the brackets on the letter P next to the letter P will change your brush size. So you can go down and quickly reduce your brush size or enlarge it just by holding down those brackets. Next thing that I will actually go through and do there um, is show them how the eraser tool works. And so what I first explain is if I've got something on the screen and I go to erase it, when I'm on my background layer, I'm, I'm actually not technically erasing. It's I'm, I'm painting whatever this background color is. So right now my color is white. If I change my background color to red, I'm actually going to paint red. I'm not erasing what was there. And so that's kind of confusing to kids at first um, to kind of understand that when you're working in a background layer, the eraser is your background color. To reset your background color, you just press D, and then you can go ahead and erase that. Now, of course, that holds, um, or it's going to change, the concept will change from that uh, if you add a different layer, because then you are erasing essentially to clear. And we're going to get into that in a second. So after I've got the kids kind of working with the brush tool, the first thing we do together is we make a sandwich. And so we'll go ahead and make a burger today. So first thing we'll do is start off with a, a brown for the bun. Now, I'm a photographer, not an artist, so everything will be a little sloppy here, but you get the idea anyways. So we start off with a bun, and right away, I intentionally make a mistake for the kids. And what I'll do is I will take and we'll put on our um, piece of lettuce, for example. And I say, all right, I'm going to paint my piece of lettuce on to the bun. And I tell them, don't do it with me, just watch. And I'll paint the lettuce on. And I say, all right, well, now I want to erase that lettuce. Maybe I didn't want it to go all the way in there. So I take my eraser tool. Well, it ends up erasing the bun as well. So we use Control-Alt-Z to back that up. So for every piece of the burger that we're going to build, I have them add on a new layer. And to do that, you can either use this uh, post-it note type icon down in the bottom right, or you can go to Layer, New Layer. And I get them into the habit of labeling their layers 
right away just because once you start working with documents that have many, many layers, it can be quite confusing. So we'll call the first one lettuce. So next, I'll go ahead and paint that lettuce on again. And what I'll show them is, oh, I made a mistake. Maybe I want to erase that. Now if I take my eraser, because I'm on a new layer, a layer by itself, I can erase and the bun comes back through. And so this is really the most powerful part of Photoshop and how working with layers in Photoshop you know, it really builds the um, concept into their minds once you start putting together a sandwich. The other reason I do a sandwich is because Photoshop layers, and not necessarily just Photoshop, but if you're using GIMP or um, Pixlr or anything like that, the layers are in what's called top-down order. So right now, you can't see this portion of the bun because the lettuce is on top of it. And so as you're building a sandwich, um, you know, you explain as you're truly building a burger in this case, if you were to really take a piece of lettuce, put it on the bun, it's going to hide that portion of the bun. And that's the case here as well. So we'll go ahead and create another layer. And we'll just go ahead and add a tomato. And you might find this is rather interesting as you're working with students on uh, doing this, is how creative some of them actually get with their um, items. Like, for example, I'm just dropping a, a simple circle here. I've actually had students take another shade of pink, and they'll start dropping you know, smaller dots on there for seeds, or they'll start coloring in little triangles and stuff. They get really into it. It's really neat what they do. And then, so now we're going to go ahead and add another new layer. Let's go ahead and actually put the burger itself. Uh, one other thing I've, from experience, found the kids have a hard time finding browns. Just let them know the browns are in the oranges. Create another new layer. Do that in mustard. And this whole concept takes to teach, I, I do it about a, a class period, it doesn't take that long to actually teach it. But the reason I use that much time on it is because after we've done the concept of creating layers and working with a brush, I do let them play around and make their own scene or project. And at that time, they go through and discover um, you know, new brushes or whatever. They find the grass and um, all the fancy brushes. Now, one of the other tricks that I show them at this time, well, actually a couple tricks here. First of all, we're going to hide all these layers except for the background. You can do that by clicking on the top eyeball, dragging down, and that will bring back our background, or in case, in this case, our bun. We need the exact same color. And so what I'm going to do here is grab the eyedropper tool, and I show them this so that you can sample the eyedropper. Now, this is really the whole point of leaving these as, as the background, because what I could have done, and if I was actually designing would have done, is I would have unlocked this background layer or right away started off with a blank layer and just duplicated the bun and put it on top of itself. But by doing this extra step, it gets them to use the color sampler so they can sample those back. And then I can just drag back up on the eyeballs, bring back my sandwich, create my final layer, There you go, there's your Photoshop burger, and then you, know, you can even touch it off with some sesame seeds or whatever. And you notice I'm using the brackets next to P for everything that I do here. Okay, so that's the, the basic concept of working with layers and just getting the kids a very basic introduction. I do go through and show them how they can reveal each individual layer. I also show them that with the move tool, by pressing V on the keyboard, they can actually move each individual layer and it's important to remind them that they need to click on each layer in order to move it because what they're going to do and they'll be working on other projects and they do this all the time too so for example right now they're going to try to move that tomato they're not going to understand it they're clicking on the tomato why is that moving i can actually pull this right off the screen and i can click down here and it's still going to move 
because that's the active layer. Photoshop doesn't realize, oh, you're just grabbing this particular circle. Right now, you are grabbing all of that. Now, if you're not sure what layer it is, you can right click and it'll show you what you're right clicking on. So, that is another shortcut rather than going all the way over there and clicking on your correct layer. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section on this video or check us out on 2techteachers.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.